Good afternoon. Welcome to Pivot 3, second session of the day. Intelligence and choice moving to a, an autonomous cloud. Uh, my name is Mike Beaver. I work for Pivot 3 as a technical uh, marketing engineer, and uh, I'll be your host for today. So what we're going to look at is some IT trends that we've seen that our Pivot 3 customers are telling us that we work with numerous uh, enterprise CIOs, and these are the kinds of things that they're telling us. So we're going to look at some trends, then we're going to look at where we can go, and we're going to look at how we make the journey to get there. So the very first trend is that we are now in a world of many clouds. Okay, we're using private clouds, we're using public clouds, and one of the big management challenges of that is that when we're bringing in all these disparate systems, we're struggling to keep control of those. We're struggling to move workloads between those clouds. We're struggling to make decisions on which is the best platform on which to run our applications. We also find that with the advent of software as a service and the real rise in popularity, we're not often getting the choice of where our application runs. Certainly not the ability to move applications seamlessly between all of these platforms. Now, what this gives us in terms of a transitional challenge is a whole set of processes. And processes are really the downfall of an IT organization because they're constantly changing. They're hard to follow. They have to be renewed and refreshed with every piece of new infrastructure and every application that's dropped into the environment. As a new workload is deployed, we have to do that. And on that note, we are work moving to a workload-centric deployment model. I've spent the last six months talking to CIOs, and I hear the same thing from every one of them. I don't really mind what infrastructure my application runs on. What I care about is the performance of that application, the resilience of that application, and the experience my users have with that app. Now, if you can find a way for me to forget about infrastructure and move between all of these platforms seamlessly, then I'm going to be in a really good place. I can finally adopt the workload-centric deployment model that I'm aiming towards. This is what I'm starting out my journey towards. I'm trying to isolate and remove a reliance on infrastructure. I'm trying to move towards a workload-centric deployment model. Now, that may be on-premises, that may be up in a public cloud or a private cloud, service provision, a software as a service. You might have a mix of infrastructures, as many of you do nowadays, in your data center. But it has always been a challenge, and it will remain a challenge, to move between those. The third and final trend we're going to have a look at is the complexity. So we saw on the previous diagram... There are an awful lot of different infrastructures with their own management interfaces, with their own sets of rules and processes and configuration aspects. Will my workload transition between those platforms seamlessly? Will I have to introduce new processes where I can go in one direction but in another? Those kind of things are increasing complexity throughout the data center. The key, obviously, of that and one of the real benefits HCI started to bring was a simplification of that infrastructure, was the modular nature, the ability to work on an operational model where we simply add new nodes with new workloads. And that was really the first step we made to this autonomous cloud. So traditional pane of glass monitoring doesn't really cut it anymore. We've got to start to automate that. We've got to start to let the infrastructure make decisions. We've got to start to let the management and the control aspect of that make decisions for us. However, there's a kicker, and that's choice. I have a very firm belief that applications and workloads will go in one of two directions. Everything will be very easily classed. It is either business and mission critical, or it is everything else. Now, over time, as trust develops in automation and provisioning and quality of service, we'll find that everything else becomes incredibly automated. CIOs, IT directors, administrators will make a very simple decision. Do I care about cost performance? Do I care about cost resilience? And it'll be a balance of those things that drive a decision. 
For example, it might run 5% slower, but might f save 25% on operating cost. That's an appealing... Uh, that's an appealing decision for an infrastructure and an administrator to make. Over time, that will be an automated piece of... Um, that will be an automated thing. However, mission critical and line of business will never be fully automated. As long as there is someone's job on the line, they will want to press the button that makes it happen. I'm getting nods from the audience here. It's absolutely true. Because... It's my decision. By all means, make the suggestion. Tell me I can look like a hero, but let me press the button that says go and make this happen. Otherwise, we get what we call an RGE, a resume generating event. It broke. I need my resume. So these are the choices that we're going to have to make. Now, how do we get there? Well, as you can see from the uh, point on the screen, the ability to move between those clouds with intelligence. And data intelligence is only half of the story. Your infrastructure has to be intelligent as well. Because data intelligence is all very good. It can tell you that it needs to run 10% faster. It can tell you that it needs another nine of resilience. But what it can't tell you is the impact in one of four locations. It can't tell you the impact of doing nothing. If I leave it where it is, what's it going to do to the virtual machine that I want to move, that I need to improve the performance on? But also, what's it going to do to everything else running on that infrastructure? And conversely, if I move this machine, what's it going to do to that machine? It may improve the performance. But does it sacrifice the performance of the VMs running in the infrastructure that I'm moving it to? You can't just do that with data management. You need intelligence in the infrastructure to be able to tell you that as well. And that's what Pivot, Pre Pivot 3 is beginning to provide. Now, the first step on that journey is an advanced quality of service. And Pivot 3 has implemented this in the Acuity product that has just been released. And by advanced quality of service, I don't just mean an IOPS limiter. It is all very well going into a machine and saying, you can have 5,000 IOPS and no more. It's rarely the problem. I can count on the fingers of one hand the number of data centers I've worked in where IOPS are the problem. It's latency. It's throughput. And IOPS limiters don't take those into account. So Pivot 3 takes care of all three. IOPS and throughput and latency. It does it in a policy-based management framework. So it's very, very simple. I decide how important a workload is. I assign that policy to the volume and off it goes. Now I can change that policy, I can change it on the fly, I can schedule it. So I can now start to be efficient with my resources. I have a control mechanism. Now that's the first step in deploying multiple workloads simultaneously within a HCI environment. Before I could only deploy a single workload because I couldn't guarantee performance for multiple workloads. I couldn't guarantee a lack of contention. Well, I could if I vastly over-provision, but let's face it, I'm not going to do that. So by moving to a workload-centric model, by applying advanced quality of service, you start to realize that journey towards the autonomous cloud. You start to be able to build in the ability to move between infrastructures, the ability to seamlessly migrate and make decisions based on intelligence. But underlying all of that, you still have the ability to retain choice. So please visit Pivot3 on booth E619. We're just down in the Exclusions Exchange. We have demonstrations available. We can show you all of these things in action. We can give you a lot more detail on the technicals of how they work. But on that note, thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for listening.